Hello, everybody, and welcome to Season 16, Week 4. I am your host, F. Lipinski, and we are watching Manco's VR versus Sunset Ravens today. This is not their first time going up against each other. This is going to be their second time. First time was actually last season, Season 15, and it, Manco's VR had quite the, quite the win. I believe the score was uh, 12 to 3. Now, keep in mind, we are a season later. Lots of time for Sunset Ravens to practice, to improve, and, uh, you know, roster, slight change. If we take a look here, um, not the exact same people who were here season 15. We have Jedi Milo, Leany, Luis Lopez, One Shot, One Body, Sir Colin, Ivan Kick, Kylo, and TJ Totter. Uh, the roster the season prior was fluctuating a lot, so it's hard to say exactly who played in that last match of Mancos versus Sunset Ravens. Um, but I can say that, you know, just because they won. 12-3 Mancos doesn't mean that they will do it again today. Uh, right now, the connoisseurs are heavily in favor of Mancos VR. So Sunset Ravens are the uh, are going to be the underdogs today, as it seems. Right now, Mancos VR have 1190 MMR. They are a silver ranked team in our Europe region here. Right now, they are currently positioned 13th place in Europe. Meanwhile, Sunset Ravens haven't only played two matches. Are still uh, their MMR is still not yet unlocked, but they are ranked 21st with Bronze Division Star. So we do have a Bronze versus Silver Division here tonight. Uh, we're gonna see if Sunset Ravens can bring a challenge to Manco's VR and maybe even take take the win here. I mean, I, I've been looking at these teams before coming in here. I've been looking at Mancos. I've been looking at Sunset Ravens. And even though Sunset Ravens are not the heavily voted team right now, I think they have a pretty good ch chance at still winning. I mean, if we're looking at how they played against uh, some of these other teams in the past season, you know, they, they have some close losses and some pretty, pretty tough wins that they've they've accomplished so i think they have a chance i think they have a chance um i think one thing that we're gonna have to see from both of these teams are who's gonna have that slight bit better coordination and who's gonna have a little bit of a better job of protecting that objective um it it does seem like sunset ravens have been capped on um on a couple of occasions like from fti last season um, and then Manco's VR, uh, they, I don't know if they're, a, if they're a team that likes to cap a lot. I did not catch their most recent match versus Access Denied, um, a few days ago, but we could, if we look back there, we can see, you know, how they performed. I believe that, let's see here. We're still waiting for the lobby to, to come up. But until then, just to keep in mind, I will fair warning. <laughs> there is a tornado warning outside and I am praying my Wi-Fi holds strong and steady and I don't lose connection. Uh, but, you know, hey, someone's got to cast this match, right? I think I think we'll be OK. You know, 18 T for the save. We do have our first map announced here. We, first map's gonna be quarantine. Look at that. I love I love casting quarantine because you get to watch some pretty sweet plays, especially like grenades. I think gr like quarantine's a great map for some grenade kills. Um, you get a little bit of dr the drone action coming out too. If you've got players who love to use ranged weapons, you know, marksmen, you'll see some of that here and there. But, you know, you could be a fast place, fast paced player and still do really well on this map. So I think it's it's kind of like that map for, for everyone. 
Um, I don't know a lot of teams who say they hate quarantine. You know, like they feel like they, they, they're not great at it. So for the first map pick from Manco's VR, we do have um, quarantine. Well, while we wait for the rest of the lobby to join in here, we're going to go to a quick little ad break and we'll be right back. Except and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, jobs that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. Who else is excited for the Denver land? I am so excited. I can't wait. I mean, I had to, I had to let that, that little ad finish up because it just makes me excited every time I see it. Before we do hop into the first round, I do want to kind of talk about these bands we have. So from Manco's VR, if we kind of break down why they made these bands, Arctic and Cargo, you could argue maybe they're not the strongest at short, short range. You know, maybe that's why they banned it. It's their worst map. Or 
you could argue maybe they're trying to ban sunset ravens just best map you know make them play on maps they're uncomfortable with whether mancos is is semi-decent at it or not when we look at both of these teams map history sunset ravens are exceedingly great at those maps cargo and arctic something about it that they just do a great job but for mancos it's actually their worst maps so for for mancos it was the easiest decision to make they were able to ban their worst maps and at the same time as also banning sunset raven's best maps by a large margin so for mancos they're probably extremely happy with those bans if we look at sunset ravens here as to see why they banned shipyard and downfall and we try to look at mancos vr's uh map stats from season 15 uh shipyard eh, they're about a 50 percent win ratio you know same with round wins so they're they're semi-decent in terms of uh relative to the rest of their maps it's not their best um but it's also not their worst and then we've look at downfall very similar thing as well manco is also not their best or worst map either it's kind of middle of the road so you you might be a little bit more in, like interested like oh well is it just sunset raven's worst maps you know is that they're the worst you know the ones that they're worst at well they did play downfall this this season one time um they lost four out of the six rounds um so they were two and six on that or two and four on that map and then for the season prior they didn't play shipyard at all um, and they played downfall one time and they lost downfall as well. So I'd say Sunset Ravens went for the mindset of let's ban our worst map. Let's just get it out of there. We don't have to stress or worry about them picking it. You know, even though it's Manco, it's not their, their most desired map to pick, but at least it, it makes Sunset Ravens play on a little bit more comfortable turf instead. So Manco's VR did pick Quarantine as their first map pick. That is a map that uh sunset ravens have not played at all season 15 out of their 13 games or at all for season 16 so far so this will be the first time sunset ravens are playing quarantine in an official league match and it's also being casted too so we already know that mancos vr doesn't have any background history on knowing how these players are going to play on this map um if we look at what Mancos VRs might want to ban, or not ban, but play for map number three, uh, you might want to pick maybe a map like Bazaar. I think Bazaar might be third map pick as Sunset Ravens did struggle a little bit. Or you could pick Subway too. Um, I would probably try to pick maps with a little bit more range um, and not as much close quarter combat. So like Egress, I'd say Egress has some pretty close quarters. Uh, Subway, same with that. So Bazaar, you get a little bit more distance depending on the objective. Um, you could even play Snow Peak um, as well as another option. Um, for Mancos VR, I feel like I'm just saying Mancos. For Mancos, uh, they had played Snow Peak one time and they actually did really well. They went 4-0. Um, that was against Blood Trail then for season 15 when they played snow peak uh they had more wins than losses um both rounds one and map ones so snow peak might not be a bad option bizarre they actually didn't have as great of a win ratio on bizarre um and same with subway subway you know you probably go with subway but i'd still be a little he hesitant since it's a little bit mo more close quarters you know, if you see Sunset Ravens are banning downfall, you think they, you know, they're not comfortable on long range maps, you know, holding angles. So might be another reason why they chose quarantine for map one. I'm curious what everyone thinks in the chat, you know, you know, put down your map three predictions. Um, I'm curious. I want to read back and see what, what everyone wrote down and see who got it right, who got it wrong. You know, it's always a little fun thing to kind of break down. It also helps those who are competing in the league. You know, sometimes you want to try to improve on your predictions on who you're playing against. You know, what are, what's my opponent going to pick? What are they going to ban? And that helps you prepare throughout the week as to what to research, what to practice on. 
So yeah, let me know what you guys think are going to be Manco's third map pick. I think for Sunset Ravens, they're going to pick map two. It's probably going to be USS Quest, is my guess. It's not banned. It's still in the map pool. Um, and Manco's struggled last season on it. They, they didn't win a single map. So I think USS Quest might be our second map for map two. Um, we do have all five players on on the lobby so we will be starting shortly uh we'll kind of we'll, we'll touch base on what objective we have first so for those of you who are familiar with hospital or the building that's directly south behind the ambulance on quarantine i call it hospital makes sense to me i mean there's an ambulance um so that's where the objective is it's going to be on the outside corner of the hospital so typically with this defense you might want to put someone in that courtyard outside of hospital protecting the cap at all times you play tucked in you don't overexpose and you're just there for last resort preventing a cap you might put somebody on the roof of hospital trying to watch you know crosses into the south um you'd put people inside the hospital you know first floor looking out the windows sometimes you actually push somebody into these two a little bit more well one's really risky but you might push someone into the center two-story burning. You know, that's got a lot of cover. It's it's a huge position for Marsoc to try to take. You know, Marsoc wants to take control of that before crossing on objective if they're coming from the west approach. Uh, but the risky one is actually pushing into tank courtyard. You know, not many people think to take tank courtyard just because it's a little bit of an overexposed position but it's super hard to flush people out from there um depending on how you play it and where you play it so i think you know some common defensive spots we're looking at on objective right next to ambulance hospital roof or you know inside hospital you might even put someone all in the back little garage uh, behind hospital to that far south building you could push someone in the gas station you have to be careful of that quick spawn in the west a lot of times people will get that quick spawn in the west they'll start pushing that gas station and before you can even get there you get picked off you know sometimes you might be able to get a trade you know if you're if you're expecting them and they're expecting you you have to hope you have a better shot but we'll, we'll see uh we'll see what they're gonna do I can hear the timer going off, so we are hopping into the first round of map number one. And here we have Sunset Ravens here. Let's see what they do on defense. They do have the quick spawn here in the west for Manco's VR. I wonder if they're gonna try to get the pick onto anyone over on the Sir Colin, maybe? Ooh. Enar does possibly see someone at gas station. Oh, but Sir Colin gets the headshot onto Enar. I, I actually thought Enar would have seen Sir Colin uh, push in there. SFR is in a pretty good position here to catch any rotates from Colin. If he crouch walks up to the gas station, he might be able to sneak in and get the pick onto Colin, but if he's too loud and making footsteps, I think Colin's gonna expect it. He might flash, swing out, get a pick. All depends on how SFR plays this. If Colin gets a little bit too peaky as well, that might cause trouble for him. Um, and SFR might be hoping he does this. It looks like he's getting a little eager to check. Uh, I don't know. We'll check back on that in a bit. Over here in the north, we do have Breaker and Surf, kit, Kite Surf in the north. We do have one player from Ancos pushing into the impact second floor as well. They might try to fish their way for Colin. And might be an eventual like a, a, a long term cross from kite surf too into the south they do i don't know if they're gonna expect leany leany's actually in a pretty non-meta position I don't, I don't think i've seen that spot all too often but 
Let's take a look over here on Delini's position. Using this Humvee as cover. Looking for an unusual cross here at that Humvee. And he's got he's got a lot of sites to be, to be checking here from where he's at. I'd say, you know, best to stay tucked in. Let them get around you into a more open position because by the time he spots someone and wants to get in an engagement, they're still they're still going to be near a lot of cover, but not just that, but rotatable cover. You know, they can get into one spot, they can rotate to another, make it a little bit more difficult on yourself. Totter on objective, but Breaker right next to him. I think it's Breaker, not Breaker. I think one shot, one body might have spotted Breaker here. I'm not sure if he made the call out, if he's got utility or not. Is he one handing his gun right now? Yeah, he was. SFR still holding it strong over there. Trying to see if he can get the pick onto Colin. Oh, and here goes the peak. One shot, one body does spot him, but his arms are sticking right through the wall. Goes for the shots, gets taken out. Lewis trying to get the rotate refrag, but can't. I'm not sure if he couldn't see him. It looked like he was looking right at him. Breaker's going to move up to objective, but Totter. Oh, Totter misses. Breaker's out here on objective. He's going to go for the cap. Lewis doesn't know. The cap comes out from Breaker. What just happened? Lewis, completely unaware that his teammate died right in front of him. And did he just... I don't even know how he has a negative one, but Breaker with the double kill, pushing objective for the cap. Let's see if we can replay that. Got the kill, running in, typing in the code. Lewis, completely unaware. And the cap goes out. What a quick cap by Breaker. Manco's already up two points on the first round that was looking really strong for sunset ravens for like the majority of that round even all the way up until the point that breaker started crossing that street i thought breaker was gonna get taken out there but wow if, if i'm pronouncing breaker wrong tell me now uh could be breaker could be breaker but incredible play from Breaker. And honestly, his awareness were, was on point. Those flicks were amazing. Uh, getting that first kill on the one shot, one body definitely made a difference there. I think the poor timing on one shot. I mean, he started to rotate to check his tablet, get out of cover. The exact moment that Breaker started crossing that street. Breaker saw him rotate and tuck back in. Waited for him to swing back around. Pre-fired him. Started moving on that objective. And just... Incredible play. Round two. Different object or different spawn here. Same objective. Looks like Lewis does have a 12 times M16. Yep. 12 times M16. Looks like he's trying to look for anyone to push up onto the hospital rooftop. Kite is going to push up there. But are they going to expose themselves on this peak to Lewis? Oh, and there goes that movement. Lewis not there to get the shots off. And it looks like a majority northeast rotate here from Sunset Ravens. They're going to send most of their players on this far cross in the south, southeast. Breaker going to be holding a really strong spot. Only thing is, is he has to get both kills on the cross. Otherwise, he's going to have a tough time having to rotate. You know, there's there's not a lot of cover near him. So in the scenario where he gets the first kill, whoever's still alive on Sunset Ravens would likely be able to, you know, deduct that there's only one place he could be behind that dumpster, you know. So they could nade it, they could flash it, they could pre-fire it. Um, or they could just rotate and run away. Are they going to spot Breaker peeking here? Oh, his gun's sticking out. He's going to peek this. Is he going to get a... Oh, and he doesn't fully commit that peek. 
Oh, here he goes. Is he going to toss a uh, utility? How about this? I don't know. Take this, you take this smoke and go for it and I'll cover your back. Simple, simple plan. What do you right. Do you want me to go through there or go straight on? Because I'm probably going to get shot up there. You see me. Lini just what do you think? Here, you team think? killed? This looks like it's, uh, it's an easy task. Especially if you crawl up there. Curious to see what happens here. Clear it. As long as you watching my front, we should be fine. All right, cool. Imagine after all this, Breaker just peeks from that dumpster and takes them both out. And you know it might happen right here. Breaker's gonna peek this this angle. Here he goes. Breaker definitely peeking it. Does take out one shot, one body. Sir Colin knows exactly where he is and gets that refrag, just like we were talking about right there. So now it's a 4v4. I, don't, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but it was actually kind of relaxing listening to those two talk about their plan. A couple of pre-fires coming out from Lini onto that center rubble. I feel like right now, Mancos kind of have the assumption that most of them are going to be coming from that southeast, where Sir Colin is. Sir Colin just dodging the bullets from Kite Surf there, almost getting taken out. Yeah, they, they're really putting a lot of attention over there. SFR, only one on objective, kind of watching the other approach here. And there's only two minutes remaining. Sunset Ravens have to play a little bit quicker if they want to have a little bit more spare time once they're near that objective. So they started up near that tank in the north, and they've made their way to the fuselage of the airplane within the first four minutes of the round. So they haven't made a lot of cover on the map yet. They're starting to pick up their pace now, though, with a minute 40 seconds. Sir Collins rotated inside the center mall. Will he be able to spot Asturias? Astures? Ooh, kites getting a little bit peaky. He's not going to check that tank courtyard, I don't think, though. He was just checking that southeast. Oh, and Colin almost gets a headshot onto Ianari. Actually, they both have to heal up after that. So right now, still, once again, three eyes all over here on Colin. And here comes a flash. Doesn't... It does connect to Colin. SFR does get a pick on the Lini. Trying to make a cross near the gas station. Oh, and here comes the peak. And down goes Colin from two different players on Mancos. Here's the cross. They make it. 40 seconds remaining. Not a lot of time for Sunset Ravens. They're going to have to watch out for SFRs. He is eyeballing that little area. Let's see his perspective here. You can actually see... Eh, you can't really see that much from there. 20 seconds remaining here. Lewis goes down all up to Totter with 20 seconds remaining. Not sure if he's even aware of how much time is is left. Playing it super tight. Five seconds. Mancos with another round win here. Three zero so far for quarantine. I think we've we've probably started to pick up on um, 
why Sunset might have been downfall, and it might be time management on offense. We've only seen them play one offensive round. This could have been a fluke of timing. Uh, I think maybe if we saw one shot get a little bit farther up into his position before getting picked off by Breaker, then the rest of Sunset Ravens might have been able to catch up a little bit more timely manner. Hard to say. For the next objective, we do have the far west objective. The one that's kind of in that cluster of a bunch of Hesco, uh, Hesco cubes, Hesco blocks. This one is a pretty... This one can be tough to defend. You know, it's not the hardest one on this, on this map to defend, but, you know, if, if someone can get on that objective all you know that's all it takes and then you've got so much cover to protect you for capping round three sunset ravens with the 03 deficit gonna have to try to figure out a way to come back here we do have the south spawn though from mancos they are going to send two to cross on the north, which is a great idea. That way you don't have all your eggs in one basket for an objective like this. Ooh, Colin and Lewis going to have to watch out here. They're about to get picked off. Good thing is that they're going to be able to call out what spawn it was. Now the whole team knows they're coming in from the south for the most part. Not sure if they knew how far Mancos even were. Freaker does call out one shot, but one shot is trying to get some picks over here onto Breaker. Not able to land any yet. Mancos doing really well with their time management, being able to push up this map with. Lots of room. Bigger trying to get the shots on the one shot here. Lini also in a great position to maybe get a refrag. He's not overexposing yet. Breaker knows exactly where one shot is and where he's likely to peek from next. Oh, one shot not peeking right now. Not overexposing. Lini kind of the only one watching the cross in the open right now. Gonna have to do their best to keep map control from Mancos. Ooh, might see a Esters. Oh, and he tries to get the shots off, but a second too late. Near middle, near middle. One on, one on middle. Call out's going out on Asters. More pre firing. Far side, far side, far side, far side. Ooh, Lewis goes down from Kite Surf. Smoke's coming out. One shot wants to peek this. He's going to rotate. He's in the open now. Oh, and he drops down to stay alive, but gets taken out by both Breaker and Asters. It's a 5v3 Sunset Ravens with only three up right now. Three minutes left on the clock. Sir Colin, Totter, and Leany. All that remain right now to keep themselves alive in this round. 
Lini is going to try to rotate back. Get itself in a little bit more comfortable position. I think Breaker does hear him moving, though. Todd are checking to make sure that it's a teammate there and not an enemy. Good tablet awareness. Two minutes remaining on the clock for Mancos to push this objective and get three more kills or a cap. Asher is starting to rotate a little bit more towards this uh, tilted wing here. Lini does not spot him. Asher is also in the open right there. Asher does spot Lini, trying to get the headshot off. Oh, and he does. What a headshot from Asher's. And wait, Lewis is just down right next to Sir Colin. And Colin doesn't get the revive? Colin and I down. He knows it. Kite surf with the kill. All up to Totter in a 1v5. Can Totter clutch it? TJ to save his team and gets taken out. Five up for Manco's VR in the final round of quarantine. Well played, Manco's VR. An incredible, incredible map. Definitely one of their strongest for sure. Uh, like we said, I think Sunset might be picking USS Quest for map two. We'll see. Really curious to see how Sunset Ravens do on, on shorter maps with a little bit more aggression. Not having to, you know, travel throughout the, the vast lands of quarantine instead. We're going to go ahead and go to a quick ad break while we swap to the next map. Ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Say trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live.
All right, and map number two has been decided. It's going to be bizarre. Which is an interesting pick. You know, it's a map that, you know, Mancos has played a lot season 15. Once again, not their worst, not their best. But this season, Mancos has struggled quite a bit. Out of two two times playing it, they have not won either time. So I can see why Sunset Ravens did choose this as their map pick as well. We'll see if they made the right choice after the end of this map. And then they're going to have to, you know... Hold on tight and try to secure map three if they want to take home a victory here. Mancos, all they have to do is play cool, calm, collected, and, you know, play steady. You know, lose a couple points here and there. That's all right for them as long as they can take back this this map in, at the end of, uh, by the end of seven rounds. It's all that matters for Mancos, and then the rest is history for them. A little bit of a roster change. We have two new people playing right now for Mancos. We have Skazzy and Chiaka. So actually the person that cap out. Breaker. Kind of surprised they took him out. I mean, dude capped, got double kill and was playing really strong. But I guess maybe this might not be his map. We'll see. We'll see how Mancos can do. They also subbed out SFR as well. Another strong player from their team. So we'll see how Skazzy and Chiaka. Chuaka? Chiaka? Chiaka. Do. We do have another cast later tonight as well. Chumbait will be casting Raptors versus Animal House tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. So for all of you watching that will be awake at that time, make sure to tune in. It will be here on VR Master League's YouTube channel. It will be a great match to watch. Who will win? You know, who knows? Could it be Animal House? Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. Could it be Raptors? Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> you know, what can I say? Maybe I'm biased for Animal House. Who knows? But uh, luckily, I won't be casting. I'll be playing. So make sure to tune in tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern, Raptors versus Animal House. This will be quite the matchup. We are hopping into round number one of map two at the moment. We have our North Kiot objective. We always love this one. One of the most fun ones to to spectate here because we love to see those cap attempts coming out. Mancos are on defense first. They're going to see if they can get a cap maybe on round two. But first they have to defend off of Sunset Ravens. How will they do on their own map pick here? We'll find out. Playing a little bit aggressive over here on the northeast push. Some pre-fire coming out at the center market to grab some attention. They're going to have to watch out for kite surf. And a drone comes out. I have not seen a drone on Bazaar and I don't know how long. Trying to spot out some players. Kite surf going to be the first line of defense likely for Manco's VR. Where's this drone going? Let's follow him. I don't even know if uh, Mancos are going to be expecting a drone. Maybe they might be able to hear it. What Sunset Ravens are trying to do right now is pretty much clear out anyone in this north side to make sure that the approach is safe to push in on that objective. Remember at one point, a very common strat was when the drone was super loud what you would do is try to put it on objective where you can't shoot it and just mask footsteps. Ooh, and Lini gets spotted by Kite Surf. Kite Surf does take out Lini. 
making it a 4v5 but meanwhile we have two players from sunset ravens making it across towards the objective as long as they're quiet enough no one's going to hear them and actually we could see a possible cap although yeah right here that's the cap route right there and then boom cap goes out as long as no one from manco's vr rotates sir colin could cap it four minutes plenty of time to prone and crouch walk your way up to objective i want to see this happen now i want to see sir colin get the cap and give themselves some points on the board Kai surf with another kill onto one shot body we can't take our eyes off of sir colin here still crawling up to the objective keep in mind right where this box is you can stand at the box and cap it tablets out calling getting really close to that objective scazzy can't see him will colin get the cap he's on it typing the code in and he does sir colin with the cap no one was prepared for that no one was watching the north as colin and tj just crawled their way up perfectly well done sunset ravens get some points on the board that's what they have been waiting for not a single kill from sunset ravens capping with all five up that is a rare sight to see we don't see it often but a five-man defense still alive sunset ravens cap it this is why they wanted bizarre so they could just cap on north kiat can sunset ravens keep up the momentum and get a round win thank you everybody for tuning into the chat i love reading all your messages i see someone hanged a picture of me on their wall today so that's always always flattering <laughs> thank you very much for everyone watching you guys are the reason why we cast without you i mean we would be just we would sound weird we would be talking to ourselves watching a game so thank you guys for watching we have a pretty interesting matchup today as you've seen first round a cap comes out on quarantine for map one. First round of map two another cap comes out from the opposing team sunset ravens seems like a trend i wouldn't be surprised if the first round of map three we see another cap sounds like both teams were getting ready to hop into the map for round number two in just a moment sunset ravens now on defense defending one of the hardest objectives to defend on bazaar can they pull out all the stops they need to keep that momentum going and uh secure a win on map number two put down your predictions below who do you think will take this map after seeing round one unfold I think their strat was to purposely not kill anyone <laughs> that first round. Just let them think that they've got the advantage and they're doing well. Gives them the confidence to stay still and, and not rotate, not check anything. I mean, once you start losing teammates, that's actually a, a very good point. If you're on defense on Volk and you have five friendlies alive protecting that objective, and you start and you lose two guys on one side or in the front or in the back whatever or three guys you're gonna say oh you know check objective make sure it's clear don't let them cap you know protect it and you get a little bit more in you know panic protect the objective mode but when you've got all five up alive you're like oh we're good we're doing good they're already low on teammates they're down to three they're down to two whatever like we don't you know I don't need a panic here. I don't need to overexpose and risk getting shot, you know. So in the sense of them not killing anyone on an objective like that, it worked perfectly. Who knows if that's what their plan was, you know, or if it just happened to work out like that. But that's actually a really interesting take to think about on that uh, 
that objective. Do we think Mancos are going to play fast? I think they might try. I think they're going to try to put some people in the front of middle market. And whatever spawn they get, they're going to try to push the sides pretty quick. But they're not going to just take that north wall route. They might try to push in through the sides of the markets and get on objective. Maybe they might even try to go upstairs and cap it. Who knows? We'll see what Mancos are going to are gonna do. I'm just worried Sunset Ravens are going to put themselves a little bit overly protective in the north and then get capped from the front. You know, they, they, they don't protect the sides good enough. Looks like we've got some kind of rehost going on here. We'll go to a quick ad break.
Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. Okay, so, sounds like they are going to restart this match because both teams have agreed that since the drone is not allowed on Bazaar, that instead of overturning two rounds, they would just replay the first round instead. So, you know, very gentleman of Manco's VR to, to accept that. We're going to see what Sunset Ravens are going to do this time around against Manco's VR. Chiaka, pretty good position here to maybe get a couple of picks. That's if they peek. They might be able to hear, too. Shots come out from Astros. They're going to rotate. Oh, if they go through this hallway, they're going to have Totter to watch out for. Ooh, and the quick peek Astros does see Totter. Do they have a smoke? They do. Wow. Great usage of that smoke. They're going to rotate. One shot wants to get that kill. Ash is going to pre-fire here. He's in a pretty good position for what's happening right now against Sunset Ravens. So far, it's slowed down a little bit. Chiaka holding it tight, not overexposing and peaking themselves. Asher's going to try to get maybe a pick up on Delini if he makes that cross, but it doesn't seem like it yet. Chiaka still super quiet over here. Actually waiting for them to go inside this room. One shot's crawling their way up to Asher's here, hopefully to get a pick. Definitely need some support from Lini. If Lini could pre-fire Asher's position, one shot would be able to push in and possibly get the kill. Oh, and here we go. One shot's in a good position now. Oh, and the trade! Asher's in one shot. That was a close one. So now it's a 3v4. Chiaka could definitely hear TJ, but is not able to see him do these boxes. But we'll likely get the pick here because I don't know if TJ is going to be expecting Chiaka on this angle.
I mean, he did rotate back with the rest of his group as well. Is TJ going to check that window? Doesn't seem like they will. Oh, Chiaco's checking their right. If Lewis makes enough noise. Ooh, Chiaka does not peak anymore. Giving TJ an opportunity here. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, and down goes TJ. Lewis does hear those shots. Might try to get Chiaka, but Chiaka does hear... Lewis and down goes Chiaka. So now it's a 2v3. Lini's pushing objective. Does he see Skazzy? Skazzy shoots. Oh, Lini gets the kill. He's on objective. Kite is far off. Two people on objective. Are, some th are they going to cap it again? Kite is way off objective. If they can kill Enar, they can go for the cap. Oh my gosh, they're going to go for the cap. If they go for the cap right now, Sunset Ravens are going to clutch up this round. Oh, and they get the kill instead. Wow. That was an incredible round by Lewis and Leany. I, that is insane. I honestly, they could have gone for the cap, but the they they're able to get the kill anyways, and they saved that round. Now they didn't get the two points like earlier, but they still got one. Great, great Marsoc round from Sunset Ravens. I honestly thought that that was gonna go to Mancos at the start of that that round when they lost both two players from Sunset Ravens. But I think Lini's rotate to the north is what drastically helped save that round. And then having his teammate Lewis on hand with him right then and there also helped. Great play from Sunset Ravens. Whew. I feel like I got a head rush all of a sudden. Let me fix the points. On the scoreboard, y'all are probably looking at me like, what are you doing? There we go. One point Sunset Ravens, four points Manco's VR right now. Round number two. Let's see if Sunset Ravens can defend this. Get themselves the second point. If Skazzy peaks this tilted fridge, might be able to pick up one here on the Lini. But Lini gets into it. actually a really good position. One that's been getting used much more frequently now. What do they do? Do they have an itch on their hand or something? <laughs> All right. One shot, one body. Going to be the defender over here in the east. Strong aggression coming in from the east from Manco. It's very similar to what we saw the first round. Not a lot happening right now from Mancos. They're playing it pretty slow here. Not what I was expecting from this team on Bazaar. I thought they were going to be a little bit of a quicker paced team.
They definitely want to take a north approach here from Mancos. And do they even have any defense in the north from Sunset Ravens? It doesn't look like it. So I don't even know if they're learning from their own plays, but wow. So Sunset Ravens, they cap from, from the north approach on the first round, but nobody's even going to protect this north. They do have Lewis on one side of the objective. Okay, so... Lewis is protecting this side of the objective from a cap. They can't get upstairs without killing Lewis. TJ is tech protecting this side, but no one's really watching this approach, which is a pretty common one. If someone comes in through here, there could be a cap. So we'll see. Ooh, one shot. And Enoch... Enoch or get a trade. I think that happened over there. Did Enoch go down? No, no, they're dead dead. Skazzy's pushing up, but is Lini going to peek it? No, nope, Lini's not peeking it yet. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Will Lini peek this corner and get the pick on the Skazzy? They are right next to each other. Just one little wall divider between the two of them. It's only half their height, so they could easily stand up and get the shots. Ooh, Lini stands, doesn't see him. Skazzy checks. Did I hear something? He's priming a grenade. The grenade isn't going to hit Lini, though. Oh, and Lini tucks back in. Skazzy checks that corner. They don't see him. Grenade comes out from somebody. I think it was Sir Colin. Doesn't hit anyone. They're getting close over here in the northeast. Starting to make that cross approach. TJ is trying to get some some uh, sights on them over there. A flash attempt isn't going to get. Oh, Lini goes for the kill on the Skazzy. He dies. He peeks over the wall. And he gets this, the kill on the Skazzy. Well done. It's now a 4v3. Mancos with only three up. They do have a good-looking approach, though, from the north still. But TJ is now on alert, trying to check, and he gets the kill on the Chiaka. It's a 4v2, Mancos VR down three players. With a minute 35 remaining. Kite surf, not in a bad position here, but just gave himself away. Sir Collins gonna rotate possibly and check that angle. Or Lini. Lini's also in a great position to watch the cross from Kite Surf here. Might leave just Asters up alive. One minute remaining. Four players, Sunset Ravens on defense. Two players, Mancos VR on offense. Oh, Kite Surf goes down from TJ. TJ does heal, so now it's just Astros. Astros has 45 seconds to run up to objective and go for the cap or kill four people in that time. TJ really holding it down for his team right now upstairs. 30 two seconds not a lot of time asters just has to fully commit here if they want a chance and here they go for the commit if they're quick enough on the cap they can do it tablet out asters going for the cap 10 seconds oh my god no way no way Oh my god. <laughs> what did we just see there? I, I don't know how Astros just did that. I mean, he had 15 seconds, just ran in, and Lewis did not hear any footsteps. I, I don't know what Lewis, what what was, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Sir Colin, 
should have maybe rotated. I don't know. But what an incredible play by Astros. The odds were against him. Four enemies up, and he's the last one alive. But he said, I don't care. I'm going in, and I'm sending that code, and I'm going to get us this advantage on map number two. Well done from Astros and Manco's VR. Wow. I don't know if that's going to hurt Sunset Ravens morale or if they're going to shake it off, but that is a tough tough thing to face. For the next objective, we do have the Southeast Complex objective right next to the little palm tree. Twenty two minutes ago, twenty six minutes ago, approximately, we started map number one and we are only three rounds in, technically two rounds based off points. Or technically three if you want to count the first one. Not sure how the defense is going to look for Manco's VR in this one. They're probably going to play a little bit tighter on the objective to prevent any caps here with, with their now new advantage on Bazaar. So far, the score is 6-1, to one, Manco's VR. We are hopping into the next round. Round number three, actually. We do have a quick spawn here. They do call out Collins Cross and Astros downs one. And wow, Sunset Ravens are sending four to the north. I have not seen a play like that before on this objective. And Sir Collins, the only one in the south. Is Sir Collin, I think, is their the guy who caps on their team by the sounds of it. So they might try to get him to sneak near in the south and they're going to play aggressive in the north to try to divert attention possibly to allow Colin to sneak in and go for the cap here. They're calling playing it real slow here. And he's actually in a lucky position because Chiaka has not pushed far in the south. Astros does down Lini from a pretty common position here, but it's a strong position. Tries to get the second shot into TJ. Actually just misses by an inch, almost getting his head. Lewis also getting ready to rotate. Are they prepared for one shot, one body though? Because he does he did make that cross. TJ actually not even sure where Asher's is. He's shooting in the wrong position here. Here comes the flashbang. Now giving away his position. One shot, one body. He's now going to be exposed to Asher's. Asher's does get the kill. Asher's so far with two kills from this north side.
What are Lewis and CJ going to do now? They should have a general idea of where Astros is, but it doesn't look like they do. They look like they're still checking different positions. And Sir Colin on his own, playing it super slow in the south, not going to be able to help out his team right now. He's looking for any crosses or anyone peeking in the south to try to get any picks. But if we look at the map, three players of Manco's on objective. It's going to be a tough one to cap here. Super, super difficult. I doubt it's going to happen. Sunset Ravens have slowed their play over here in the north. They need some kills. Two minutes, 30 seconds left on the clock. Sounds like a lot, but based on where they are, it is not. They're going to have to pick up their pace just a little bit. And... Chiaka actually in a good position to possibly get a pick on a Colin. Ooh, and Colin gets picked out by Chiaka. So now it is a 2v5 here. Sunset Ravens versus Manco's VR. trying to get the shots onto TJ but not able to connect enough You'd be amazed with the intel that a body, that a player can give. Tossing utility, like a flashbang, could be enough to give someone the idea of what direction you're heading in. Sometimes it's just luck. Yeah, Lewis and TJ not not looking great yet. <clears throat> Ooh, Kite's gonna peek this. They're gonna pull their gun up here in just a second. To try and get a shot off. And he does get Lewis! Oh, that's gotta hurt. That has gotta hurt. All up to TJ. They're going to pre-fire it. Oh, and he gets the trade. That's three points. Manco's VR. One point. Sunset Ravens. Right now from Manco's. Four kills from Astros and a cap. Really holding the team on his back right now. Uh, Kite serve also with three kills. Doing a fantastic job. Over from Sunset Ravens, quite the kill, even kill spread over here. Three kills, Lewis, TJ, and Leany. Two kills, one shot, one body. So, you know, definitely more of a team effort uh, kill-wise from Sunset Ravens. But they need to start reflecting that with points in the match. They got to shake everything off. I could tell, you know, with those last few rounds, the frustration... Is get into them, shake it off. If you can shake it off, bring it back, get this sec get this map win, and then put in all the effort you got map three. 
that's what it takes they're definitely playing really well they just you know some small minor mistakes whether it's the gun down or just not checking corners manco's doing an incredible job right now i mean wow what a comeback getting capped on and losing an offensive round to come back with three points unanswered what an achievement from manco's vr uh, hopefully we can see them continuing this uh, this miraculous comeback from the first round of map two for the rest of the match sounds like we're gonna be hopping into the next round here round number four We got one person attempting to cross, but no one's going to be checking it. Lini looks like they have stepped away for a moment. Two people crossing the south as well, Skazi and Chiaka. Pretty tight defense on objective as well. trying to prevent any kind of capping it's probably going to be a slow round here for round number four this is series point as well if mancos can secure one more point here they have won the series against sunset ravens Mancos are playing it super slow, taking their time, making sure to check corners. That is the way to do it. You have six minutes every round. Take your time. Watch angles. Back each other up. And make sure that you are safe before you start attacking the objective. Skazzy looks like they've got an M203 smoke. This is going to be fun. Dep wonder where they're gonna place it if he's gonna put it right where he's looking or if he's gonna put it on the objective honestly a great spot to put it is right here between these two staircases it's gonna cause a lot of panic because you can't see what's happening and honestly if you put it a little bit closer maybe right here you might be within tablet reach of objective too Hour and a half into the match so far. Map two. Three points Mancos VR. One point Sunset Ravens. And so far we've actually only ran out of time one time this entire match. After eight rounds. Seems like there's been a call out from one player on Sunset Ravens. Three minutes remaining. Smokes are coming out. Pretty good smoke there. Going to block some view of anyone that would be in the south watching any crosses. And look at this. Tell me if that's not scary. Actually, we'll make it even scarier. Hold on. Oops. Well, now that Skazzy moved, it's not as scary, but we tried. Now, Sunset Ravens are giving Mancos a lot of room to play around that objective. They're not watching the South Cross as well as they're not watching the North Cross towards that objective. Ooh, one shot. Trying to get some picks onto Asters or Kite, but can't get the kill. They're getting close over here in the South, Mancos VR. Three members. 
Will Lini rotate to the south once Mancos have shown their hand? Ooh, Colin almost getting the shot on the kite. But Asher's ready for the refrag in case they start to peek. Oh, bad smoke from Skazzy. Not sure what happened there. I think they meant to hit the uplink itself. And it went right past. That is unfortunate. Leany going for some shots on the kite. Oh, not going to connect. Asher's is pushing in to the, to the stairwell right next to Sir Colin. They're getting close on that objective. They are getting a good field of view of who is defending what on this objective. And Nade goes out. Oh, is Lewis going to peek? Oh, he doesn't. Sir Colin can hear Asters right next to him, but he's not going to call it out. Right on bomb. Oh, now he does. Inner takes out TJ. Lewis takes out Asters. Great kill from, from Lewis. But the rest of Mancos are pushing in. Skazzy's going to push up, and Lewis, Lewis gets the kill. It's a 4v3. Ten seconds remaining. Lini goes down. Smoke on objective. Lewis gets the kill on Chiaka. One shot kills Kite Surf. More smokes. Three seconds remaining. Not enough time. Sunset Ravens get the round win. And Lewis with the third kill. Lewis going seven and one. Wow, putting in the work. Sunset Ravens defense are definitely one of their strong suits as long as they are watching all angles of that objective. Great job by Sunset Ravens. I mean, that was nearly flawless of a round. You know, there was a little bit of doubt while allowing all of Manco's VR to push really close to that objective without any resistance but mancos took way too long by the time they got where they wanted they only had 25 seconds left on the clock The next objective will be the tank objective, right next to where we just were. So the far east tank objective. Sunset Ravens will be the first on Marsoc. And this is their chance to take home this map. Both teams are at match point here. A cap from Sunset Ravens means that they will move on to map three, holding it in the series. But just the strong defense from Manco's VR is all it's gonna take to secure the series as well and win against Sunset Ravens. It's definitely heating up a little bit in here and getting super, super intense. Thank you all for stopping by and watching. Make sure to tune in tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern for Chum Bait Casting Raptors versus Animal House. We'll have even more intense action there. Hopefully not a close match. Hopefully Animal House win 12-0, but we all know that probably won't happen. But, you know, I can dream. Um, it'll likely be a pretty close match. <laughs> but, uh, and for those of you who are listening and don't know, uh, Animal House is my team. That's why I say that. I'm not, I don't, I don't usually say that stuff, but when, when I'm playing in it, I have to, I have to be optimistic about myself and my team. Wow. Lewis, seven kills, just incredible. If they could put that same effort from last round into our next round heading in, I think we'll see at least at least a round win from Sunset, if not a cap.
And there's the beeping. We're on round number five. Really close, obviously, haven't they? Wait, what? We got a marksman player on Bazaar from Lini. If we look here on the map, a great defense set up by Mancos, putting one at each corner of objective. And Skazzy taking Astro's position and holding down this angle. Will Sunset Ravens have learned their lesson from that one round? Oh, and here we go. First, first engagement here. Kite surf. TJ hears them, calling them out with the hand signals. Oh, and some shots go out. I don't want to take my eyes off. Kite surf gets calling. He gets two. Oh, with a double kill from Kite Surf. Down goes two players. I don't know who said that. It's kind of funny to think, oh, well, that was unfortunate right afterwards. We still have Lini super far off of the rest of their team. Probably going to try to cross into that south. I have to watch out for Skazzy here. He's setting up into a pretty good position. Oh, yeah. Skazzy just saw that utility toss from TJ, and now he knows exactly where to expect them. Not looking great for Sunset Ravens. Manko is doing a really good job on holding this defense. Here goes the flash utility. Actually, a great toss, but don't think it caught anyone as they are inside that building with a little bit of extra coverage. This guy's just going to rotate to a little bit of a better position for himself for long-term defense. Not going to get overly aggressive here as he doesn't have to. You know, ideally only has to watch this angle. But, oh, TJ gets the kill. And that helps out Sunset Ravens. It's now 3-3. Three, three. With majority of the defense actually on the south side of the objective giving a pretty decent opportunity for a cap here. If you block the coverage from Astros, then you could send the code. Oh, they get they get some hits on the Ch Chiaka, but not enough to down them. They want to make this cross, but smoke's running out. Oh, and there goes that smokes. They can't make that cross anymore. But they're still trying to get the shots onto Chiaka. Where did Lini go? Lini actually rotated back all the way into the north wall to back up their teammate. Two minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Here comes Lini. Is Lini going to check for Inar? Oh, and they might get too peaky here. Oh, yep. Oh, wow. That was so close. Incredibly close. They made the call out, though. Two minutes left, and they're narrowing down those options. Pre-fires onto Inar. Can't let him peek. A great smoke blocking Astor's point of view, but Inar is still going to be able to see... The opponent cross to objective, but Lee did make the cross. Not sure if Inar knows. Minute 30, and we still have TJ and Lewis still in the same position as five minutes ago. 
A lot of pre-fire going out onto objective, preventing a cap. Giving away his position. Minute and 10 seconds remaining. Not a lot of time here. Asher's going to toss some utility, perhaps? No. No. Oh. Pre-fire, not going to land anything. One minute remaining for Sunset Ravens to save themselves on this second map. Here goes a flash toss. Not going to connect with anybody. Down goes a trade, but revive is possible. 45 seconds remaining. Enar almost gets taken out by Lini. Enar having to heal. 40 seconds. Sunset Ravens looking super strong here. They're going to have to watch out for Asher's 30 seconds. Oh, down he goes. Can he get the kill? He gets the kill on Asher's. The objective is open. Lewis with 20 seconds remaining. Can he go for the kill instead? Can he go for the cap? 15 seconds. Can Lewis cap it and win the map too? Oh, and he goes for the kill. He goes for the kill instead of the cap. That could have been it for Sunset Ravens. Whoa! That could have been a huge turning point. That could have been a huge turning point there. The great offense by Lini holding down Inar to, so to, he couldn't rotate. He couldn't peek, but I, I don't know if he purposely got the kill or if the pre-fire just happened to pick off Inar as he was trying to, maybe he tried to get himself killed. He knew he was last up. I, I can't, I can't tell from, uh, from my perspective, but that was an incredible play by Sunset Ravens and that kill by Lewis. Nine kills. Lewis has nine kills right now and one death on Bazaar. It is tied up three to three. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. My voice is going to be so dead after this. Definitely going to be one of the highlights for Sunset Ravens will be that moment right there. What a play. That is what Sunset Ravens were hoping for this whole time, where it was that kind of coordination and teamwork, and it was so close to a cap. It was, it was so close, and he had so much time. He had 15 seconds, but well done. Round number six and the final round. Let's do this. Love, love that camaraderie there. Will Sunset Ravens clutch up this final round of Bizarre Map 2? TJ with the first kill takes out Kite with the headshot. A long grenade! Wow, what a toss! That could have taken out Skazzy if it was primed any any longer. I don't know who tossed that. I think that might have been Colin. It's 5-4 Mancos with one dead so far on their team. Backward smoke toss. I have never seen that before. What a, what a move from one shot, one body. An interesting smoke. Not sure what the thought process was behind it. Good nade attempt, but hit that building, so it caused it to fall short. Oh, Inar downs Colin, but he is resible by TJ. Oh, and Inar can now see that they got the revive. Skazzy gets the kill. A lot of proof. TJ, get this. TJ got the headshot on the Shiyaka. 
What a play! Smokes are going out. Skazzy's gonna probably try to go for a cap attempt, but Body, one shot Body can still see the objective. Oh, and TJ gets another kill! There's two left for Mancos! TJ is clutching up for his team right now. More smokes from Anar. They're gonna try to make the cross attempt in the south. They did make one cross from Astros. Body trying to pick up Astros but can't make the connection. Might be able to make the call out though. That one's in the south giving uh, Leany the opportunity to possibly get the kill on the Astros as he rotates. Three minutes and 35 seconds left in the round. TJ might want to rotate into a little bit of a better tucked up position. Oh, and he gets the kill! Another headshot from Leany, or from TJ. All up to Astros. Astros does take out one shot, one body. Can he get the final kill? Can TJ get an ace? All up to Astros in a 1v3. Still very possible for Mancos to take this round. Astros clutches, has clutched it up in a 1v4 before. Can he do it again in a 1v3? The momentum is carrying with Sunset Ravens right now. The morale is high. It will be tough. Will TJ get the final kill and get the ace? He is in a position to do so. D does he see him? Oh, and he gets the ace! TJ clutching it up for Sunset Ravens. They win 4 3 on map 2. Wow. Oh, the head rush. The head rush is so, so, so big. Woo. Well done from sunset ravens four three we've got map three coming up we're gonna go to ad break so i can take a breather thank you very much Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, jobs that's real big. Say trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live.
My, oh my, what an intense map two that was. Honestly, my heart is racing. The blood is rushing to my head. I am losing my mind. That was so, so close. And wow, we're seeing for map number three, Subway. You heard that right. We're gonna watch map three be played on Subway. Not what I was expecting. I was I was expecting a map like Snow Peak, but Mancos picked Subway, and I think Sunset Ravens might have a pretty good opportunity at taking this win. Especially if they can get a cap out. And this is a map that you can easily cap on multiple different objectives. So we'll see. We, we know they like capping. That's for sure. They've tried it about three times now. But so does Mancos VR. They also like to cap. They've tried it twice. One being successful. For the first objective, we have the most capable objective, the north basement or the north turnstiles stairs that lead outside. An incredible map too that was. I can't get enough of it. We should be hopping into the first round of map three very shortly. Sunset Ravens will be on the defense first for map three round one. Based off of the pattern so far this match, we might see a cap for Manco's VR round one here. They capped round one quarantine and Sunset Ravens capped round one of um, uh, Bazaar. So... We'll see what happens. Wow, looking at these highlights, just impressive. TJ really pulling in the, the clutch for Sunset Ravens on, on the last round there, getting the ace. Let's see if he still has more... Uh, See if he's got more in his tank for this one. Same with Lewis, also on fire. Looks like we have a player swapping out for Sunset Raven, so we'll do a quick little intermission while we wait.
There will be a quick timeout, so we'll be back in a few minutes.
All right, we are back and we have map three, round one. Sunset Ravens are refreshed and ready to go. Let's see what we got going on here. Looks like a grenade in hand for TJ. We're gonna go for the nice toss and it's just a bit short. Not gonna get anyone any longer. Might have gotten Breaker there. Any returned utility to toss back at TJ by any chance? Doesn't sound like it. We'll see what happens. So far, nah, nothing much happening here. I have adjusted my audio, so if I am too quiet now, please let me know. Giaka with a nice angle towards objective. Trying to catch anyone peeking. Ooh, TJ with one kill on the Skazzy. Five players up for Sunset Ravens. Manco is playing it super slow up here in the north. Not making much ground coverage either. And Enar kind of just hanging in the back waiting for a flank. But there isn't one yet. I like this defense from Sunset Ravens. They've kind of got some good southern control to make sure that they can't cross the objective and a good, strong north defense as well. Breaker has rotated up here. Did TJ rotate to get some more utility? Oh, and gets taken out by Ashters. TJ got a little bit too aggressive there. See what's going on here. No way. I'm dead. <laughs> oh, I'm down. Oh, my goodness. What a play. I meant to click the replay button there, and I'm not sure if I got it in time. Another grenade, it's a perfect one! Gets one shot, body! Yeah, push instead, push instead. Down. Wow. And a flank from Colin! No, maybe the... Asher's expecting it, down goes Colin! Down goes Breaker, what a clutch by Colin! To defend the north, and he can get the refive under one shot, one body. Call Colin just leaves one shot, one body. I was, I was gonna say, I'm like, do you just not like him or something? Down goes Colin. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Don't peek that, Leany. Are you upstairs? Are you upstairs? Are you upstairs? Can you see upstairs? Can you see if anyone's coming upstairs? Oh. The empty mag. Oh my goodness. Leany barely surviving there.
Trying to see if you can spot anybody. 40 seconds left. This is your time to rotate and get the revive. Here comes the smoke for the cap. Here comes the utility. Chiaka's going for the cap here. <clears throat> Will he get it? Chiaka's struggling to send the code and he sends it. Lini gets the kill. Chiaka with the cap. Give me Manco's two points. Oh no, that was that was just not looking great there. Wow. Sunset Ravens had some hope, but completely not even going for the revive into one shot. <clears throat> just made it a struggle. I mean, they he was he was right there. <laughs> they just walked right over his body. He was right there. That's when communication is important there. It was a good attempt. It was a great flank by Colin. But Manco's just... They they had a little bit better luck on their side there. And then holding off... like pr Keeping Lini from rotating for the revive was also big. I mean, Inar was doing a great job at that too. Hopping into the next round, round number two. Where you at, Lini? Morale is not looking great right now for Sunset Ravens, but they almost had that round. They have to remember that. It was close. Any C4 up here? Doesn't look like it. Pretty open north uh, staircase. Oh, jeez. Two C4. Wow. And both are in his hand. <laughs> Interesting. He's also got a 5.7 pistol. Not sure if there's a flashlight on him or not. A flashlight pistol would be interesting. Oh, man. This would be hilarious to see both C4s being used perfectly. Now, a uh, grenade will detonate those if it's in the radius. So... They might not be as effective as they're hoping, but we'll see. Right now, it is nine points to four, Manco's VR. Let's see how Mancos are going to defend this here. We do have two players, Colin and Lini, in the south. Let's check in over here real quick while we've got the time. Enar in a pretty meta position here. Same with 
Chiaka, but they're such strong spots. I mean, you have to perfectly smoke both or hope that while you're trying to go for one, the other guy doesn't peek you at the same time. Sunset Raven's playing it quiet up there and slow. One thing I like what TJ's doing is, at least he was for a second, was going prone. When you're prone, you will see your opponent's feet uh, as, as early as you can. So by the moment I see their feet right here, I can shoot them and they wouldn't be able to see me yet because their eyesight wouldn't see me until right about here. Now they can see me. So I can, they see me, now they don't, and I can shoot them. So that's why if you're watching the staircase where Skazzy is, going prone gives you as much advantage um, of shooting them first when they come down those stairs. And if they're prone and you're prone, then it'll be as even advantage as possible. So it might be a trade, but... I wonder if he's got any utility. He's got flash and a grenade on him. Reaper's got two C4. Here come the smoke. One C4 misses. Second one misses. One shot, one body trade with Breaker. Two smokes on top of each other. Nade misses, doesn't get anyone. 4-4. Four, four. Collins creeping up, but might get picked up by Enar. Really, this offense is just going to have to hope they can take the north. Otherwise, it's going to be a tough day. Colin gets taken out by Inar. Uh, Lini now knows where both Marsoc players are in the south. And this is where having grenades are useful from Marsoc, tossing them down those stairs to clear those quick corners like that vending machine. TJ is going prone here to try to get the pick on the Skazu. This might be a great time to, to know how effective this uh, play is here by going prone. Let's see. One minute remaining. Lini's going to have to start making some uh, progress here where he's at. Fifty seconds. Lewis also going prone. Twenty-five seconds. Lini still far behind. TJ should be able to see Skazzy first. He does. Down goes Skazzy. Asher's last one in the north to defend. Down goes Lini. If they can kill Asher's, they could cap in time, but only ten seconds. Sunset Raven's not aware of the time. Eight, seven, six. Oh wow. The double kill. The double kill. They did not check their corner. And that's a huge mistake there, but Asher's takes advantage of it. Fantastic double kill. Mankos are now 3-0. and oh. We're two hours and 24 minutes into this match, and this might be the end right here, unless Sunset Ravens start getting some point wins. Look at this double kill. Oh, perfectly, perfectly lined up there for Asher's. The next objective and what could be the last here is going to be the middle platform objective. Uh, pretty tough one to attack if the defense is in a decent setup position. But if you two get, if you get too aggressive on the defense and you start showing your, your hand a little bit too early, then the offense gets a little bit easier. Uh, getting those early picks helps out a lot. But when you're running low on time and you get closer and closer to objective, as long as there's three or four people up on Volk, it's hard It's hard to push that. Unless you go for the cap play. Mm 
Manko is playing super strong this third map on Subway. Uh, Sunset, keeping it close each round, leaving it down to one, to one or two players left alive. They can shake off the first two rounds of this map. They'll be able to get some more points on the board and maybe even take home map three. But Manco has just been playing so consistent this match. Round number three. <laughs> <laughs> Not Jerry. Ooh, and look at that push from Mancos. TJ doesn't want any bit of it. One shot, one body thinks that they're coming in through Horseshoe. But in fact, it's a five-man basement push. Grenade comes out from one of the little players, Colin or Leany, but not going to render useful at all. No C4, no pistol flashlight anywhere from Volk here. And an AS Val. Oh, interesting weapon choice. Yeah, do you realize? One left side. Lewis. You even you confirmed him too. I'm such a spag. That was an own team, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, again. Oh my. <laughs> At this point, you might as well. <laughs> Lewis. At least they're able to joke about it and shrug it off. One shot does down Asters, but has to confirm him. The AES Val does not do a lot of damage, so a lot of shots won't automatically kill someone. If one shot goes down, that'll be a revive for Asters. Oh, and down goes one shot. So Asters can get revived now. It's 4v3, but with a possible revive. TJ's going to toss a grenade. Oh, almost got two with it. If primed a little bit longer. Oh, M203. Okay, Manco's VR. They want the cap. They're setting up for it with that M203 smoke. Breaker has breached the mid platform from north basement stairs and chiaka is gonna do the same in a minute as well but leany from this from the horseshoe might have an angle based on the defense so far they are not set up to prevent the cap from the navigation panel here as well a cap can come out breaker's gonna go for it tossing a smoke on himself Breaker's got tablet out and he's going for the cap. Two minutes, 30 seconds left. Down goes one. Breaker on the objective. Can't see though through the smoke. 20 seconds. Lewis. Oh, and there's the cap. 5 0. Manco's VR on map number three. Well played. Great, great teamwork there from Manco's. Wow. The final score is 12 to 4. Manco's VR. Well played. Great teamwork. They knew exactly what they were doing against Sunset Ravens, it seemed. They knew they knew how they were gonna play, and they knew that they'd have that opportunity in the north. 
let's go through the uh, recap screen real quick. And go through these highlights. The cap from Chiaka. The flank from Colin. Oh, that was such a great flank, too. Man. And then these nades afterwards. Look at these nades. You got Lewis with one. And then the second one getting one shot, one body. Oh, man. There's that first one on the Lewis. Back on Bizarre to finish up the map. TJ with that ace. We had a lot of clips from tonight. 10 kills, 4 deaths, TJ. Here's his fourth kill of that round. With a headshot. His third kill. What seems like through the smoke almost. Skazzy. His second one was definitely through the smoke. Right there, 100% on the Chiaka headshot as well. TJ getting the headshot on the Skazzy right there. He was honestly on fire those last two rounds. He was trying to call out Surf, but the team wasn't quite ready for it. And they got taken out by two. Here it comes for the final play from mancos on that objective and sunset ravens holding it down watch these look at the timing on that lewis as he's running away kite surf gets that pick tries to get tj as well on the second time around this flash was interesting look at that just stick the gun over the over the wall and shoot leany's cap or at least attempt, actually. Lewis got the kill on the kite surf. I remember that now. And then the round before that was the cap from Colin. Or no, I didn't even get the cap on screen. I missed it. That's right. From Astros, but Colin with the cap there. And then back on map one, almost two hours ago, kite surf getting the kill on the Colin. There was a lot of revive missing opportunities from sunset ravens tonight and i'm not sure if that would have completely swung the entire series in their favor but definitely made a couple rounds of an impact breaker with the kill and the cap after the double and that'll finish up the first map of highlights well done both teams thank you all for watching thank you to our sponsors once again and the production team without all of you none of this would be happening today don't forget 9 p.m eastern in just four hours you can watch chum bait cast raptors versus animal house make sure to go on the website and put in your connoisseur predictions of who will win that match and i will see you guys tonight actually i won't be talking directly to you but you'll be able to watch so thank you all for watching and have a good night or a good rest of your day depending on where you are or good morning to each their own thank you
Onward VRML is brought to you by Downpour Interactive, Helga, the esports manager. Thanks for watching VRML.